Hello and welcome to another edition of the Town Administrator's Report. My name is Michael Gilberto, Town Administrator for the Town of North Reading, and with me today is Danielle McKnight, the Town Planner for the Town of North Reading. Danielle, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. I should mention that we are broadcasting from the wonderful studios in the Damon Tavern of NORCAM, uh, and we give a special thank you to NORCAM for their assistance. So today we have a couple items that we were going to discuss, and they relate to planning here in the town of North Reading. And uh, I think it's certainly timely for folks to hear about what's going on at the CPC and with regard to larger planning and economic development related initiatives. Because there's been a lot going on the past couple of years, and we have town meeting coming up in October. Um, so maybe we could start with just an introduction of what the Community Planning Commission does and what its role is here in town. Sure. Um, the Community Planning Commission, or the CPC, is the land use board in town that is charged with um, reviewing a lot of our development permitting that comes to town, um, applications that come in from developers, um, mainly um, th that they deal with uh, their public hearings, they issue special permits, they review subdivisions, um, and they're also charged with long-term planning for the town. Um, so that would include master planning, other kinds of long-term special planning projects. Um, and while they don't enforce the zoning bylaw, they are charged with, um, with, with really writing the town's zoning. Excellent. So they have a lot of involvement then in what happens with the land that's within the town's borders and the type of the development that takes place. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the membership of the CPC and how one would become involved with the CPC? Sure. So the CPC is an elected board. Um, currently the membership is, um, the chairman is Warren Pierce, uh, vice chairman is Bill Bella Vance. Um, we have uh, Jonathan Cody, Joe Vino, um, and Chris Hayden are the uh, other three members. And Excellent. so that makes up the five, five elected. And they're elected, you said. They it? are elected. Excellent. So uh, we know we see in the paper or, or we hear around town hall about development projects that might be pending before them. Um, are there any particular projects that come to mind that the residents might be interested in hearing more about? Sure. Um, there's actually been quite a bit of activity on Main Street. So we have three applications that have either very recently come in um, or have recently been completed. Um, one of those applications was for 35 Main Street, the site of um, the uh, bowling alley and Andrea's Pizza. Um, there have actually been two uh, concepts submitted for that. Um, one of them that went through the permitting process already as a preliminary subdivision, which is kind of interesting, um, showing the division of that property into three new parcels with a little roadway going into it, um, showing us three new retail buildings. Um, what those retail spaces might be, uh, we, we don't know yet. That was just a preliminary approval. It doesn't actually give them permission to construct anything, but it was a preliminary okay that, that um, puts them on, um, uh, you know, on footing to, to, to go ahead with a, with a definitive subdivision. Um, the other concept that they have shared with the town is um, they're interested in potentially doing a self-storage facility there, though we have not actually received an application for that. So that's 35 Main Street. Um, there is a small, um, uh, there, there's a property that's a, a, a row of three houses that maybe some residents are familiar with. Um, they're, they're located at 25 to 29 Main Street. Proposal has come in to the CPC um, that's currently still under uh, review. Um, you know, the public hearing is still open and that proposal is for retail and office space, um, mainly for contractor use, um, I think an electrician. Um, businesses like that um, and they've, they've submitted um, a, a plan that's currently being reviewed now mm -hmm. and in addition to that we have uh, 20 Main Street which um, most residents will know is um, CVS and Eastgate Plaza that's an interesting proposal where they're looking to uh, build a brand new CVS uh, roughly where Eastgate Liquors is located today and then relocate Eastgate into a renovated and expanded space within the existing shopping plaza. So that's actually probably the biggest of all three. Um, that's a pretty pretty major redevelopment of that. Sure. Center. And where is that uh, development in, in the process right now? The site plan review is ongoing. Uh, they came in uh, a couple of weeks ago to open up the, the public hearing and to introduce the project. Um, it's also, that's a project that's large enough that um, it needs a peer review, which means that we send it out to um, an independent consulting firm uh, that we work with uh, to look at the civil engineering and the traffic impacts. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, uh, that's, um, that review is, is ongoing and we next expect to hear from the developers um, on November 4th at the public meeting. 
with the CPC. Excellent. And uh, I know there's some uh, project uh, that was uh, uh, on the horizon over uh, off of Park Street. Uh, is, uh, is it a subdivision project that's out there? Yes. So that was a very recently um, approved uh, nine lot um, subdivision residential uh, that's proposed to be nine new house lots. Uh, that was approved. Uh, the construction hasn't begun yet. There may be some clearing going on, but the actual construction of the roadway um, has, is not yet underway, but it has been approved. I see. Excellent. Well, thank you. So it sounds like things are busy. Things uh, have been busy. With regard yes. to the CPC's business yes. and uh, uh, all things uh, looking to, to initiate development in the, uh, in the town. One of the things that I, I think people may have familiarity with the CPC would be the review of the traditional um, ho housing lots uh, in a subdivision plan. And you mentioned that Park Street is an example of one. But I, I imagine historically that there was a time when there was a lot of activity relative to the build out of the town. Uh, where there was a lot of that type of proposal coming forward. Um, has it, has it, the nature of the project that's come forward changed over time? I think it has in some ways. Mm -hmm. there, you're right that there was a, a real, um, a very intense flurry of activity, probably between uh, the mid to late 90s up through the early 2000s, where there were a lot of subdivisions being built in town. The number of new residential neighborhoods just um, was kind of skyrocketing. We had a lot of avail available land that was being developed and today a lot of the town is built out. It's not completely built out by, by any means, but much of the available residential land um, has already been subdivided and gone through that process. This Park Street subdivision is actually fairly typical of what we have seen um, mm -hmm. in the past. There's nothing really all that unusual about this subdivision. Um, it's, it's probably smaller in size than some of the larger ones that have come in that had more leg 25 or 30 house lots, but this is actually for recent years where there isn't a lot of available land to subdivide, nine lots is, is quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. We also have a subdivision that's um, been undergoing construction for a while, um, an extension between Charles Street and Deerfield Place, mm -hmm. which is an 11 lot subdivision. Um, but this is, um, but Park Street is, it's a, it's a pretty typical, um, there were no waivers issued for any special design needs. Um, it's really just basic one acre house lots um, mm -hmm. off of a, a typical street with a sidewalk. Excellent. So maybe for somebody who might be watching and, and isn't familiar with the process for a development to occur, the town obviously has uh, you know, robust zoning requirements. Could you talk about what process the CPC would follow when approving any sort of a development, um, you know, the application of zoning and making determinations? I think it might be useful for folks who may not be familiar with it. Sure. Um, so when a subdivision comes in, or, or any project really, um, we take in the application and we review it ourselves, um, but it also gets routed around to the other departments who are involved in developing land. And that includes the building department. So um, our building inspector is also the zoning enforcement official for the town. So he um, is in charge of making sure that things that are proposed do meet zoning um, in terms of the regulations that are in place. Um, the CPC doesn't have the ability to waive anything with regard to zoning, but they can waive subdivision regulations. So, for example, um, if a project comes in that has a narrower street width than, um, than is required under the subdivision regulations, that's something they can waive. But if something needed to be waived with regard to zoning, that goes to the Zoning Board of Appeals, and the ZBA and the building inspector make a determination um, about zoning. But in terms of project review, if the project is large enough, as I mentioned, we do send it out to um, a, a consulting firm, which is done at the expense of the applicant, mm -hmm. not at the expense of the town. Um, and that way we get a third party review so that um, you know, it helps us to be sure we're not missing anything in terms of any negative impacts that may come along, um, just to make sure that we're, what we're approving is appropriate in terms of the way the project has been engineered, um, how the drainage will work, whether there could be any negative impacts on neighbors, because um, those are all really important things that the CPC really is charged with considering when they approve or deny a project. And there are really specific criteria for what it takes to approve or deny a project. Um, I do think uh, some people who have never been to a CPC meeting or who aren't as familiar maybe with the development process sometimes are under the impression that um, the board can deny or approve something based on whether it thinks it's a good project for the town. And generally that isn't the case. I mean, we have really specific criteria that's already laid out in our zoning and our subdivision regulations and the town's bylaws. And in most cases, for most projects, if, if a project meets all of those requirements, for example, subdivision really is by right. If you come in with a project that meets street widths and construction standards um, and appropriate grading and you meet the drainage requirements and you've met our stormwater management requirements um, and you meet the zoning, 
you have the right to do that as, as a land developer. And it doesn't really matter whether the CPC likes the project or not. It's, um, they're really more charged with figuring out whether this is a project that meets our requirements. There are some kinds of projects where that differs, and that would be a situation where we have a special permit. Usually that's for use. Uh, the ZBA grants some special use permits. This, the CPC grants other special use permits, and that's defined in the, in the zoning bylaw, which board is the special permit granting authority. And in those situations, um, that's more discretionary. Those are permits that come in and, and either board will look at what is um, what the impacts might be of this particular project. And it's not just a matter of does it meet all the zoning requirements, yes or no, but it's a matter of could there be some negative impacts that this particular project may introduce that, say, a similar project down the street or across town didn't introduce. Mm -hmm. So that is more discretionary. Yeah, interesting. So it sounds like it's a pretty extensive review of development that takes place. Yes. And uh, I, I know that I think our residents, you know, appreciate that in in terms of the way that it protects the character of the town. Um, there are so outside of the development role that the CPC has, I know that there are a number a number of special projects that have been ongoing that have uh, come out of your office and out of the Community Planning Commission. Uh, and probably the one that most folks are most familiar with is the JT Berry property. Um, so could you maybe give us uh, an update as to where that project stands? Sure. Um, so we're really excited about this. Um, this is a great opportunity for the town, and it's been a, a very high priority um, for, I think, uh, the CPC as well as the selectmen. Mm -hmm. And the Economic Development Committee is really the board that has been um, really charged with um, kind of initiating this process of taking this property and figuring out how to best sell and redevelop it. And um, with the support of the Selectmen and the Planning Commission, um, the EDC has um, really taken a role in defining how we want to put this out. Um, this, is a, this is a public um, piece of property, so we, we are um, going through an RFP process where we're soliciting proposals. Um, we spent the last few months probably figuring out um, what it was that we would like to ask for and in crafting um, an appropriate RFP. We work with town council and we're working with um, a broker, um, it's TRA, um, is the brokerage firm that we're working with. And um, we have recently put out an, an RFP to sell and redevelop the property. It's about 34 acres. Um, actually, there are two properties left. Um, 102 Lowell Road and 104 Lowell Road are the two properties that make up um, what used to be the other half of the JT Berry um, the former hospital and um, what was already developed as the Edgewood Apartments, um, the site of a, a 40R uh, project um, from 2006-2007. What didn't get developed as part of that project, which was initially intended to be a mixed-use development with residential on one side and office space on the other, there was no market for office at the mm -hmm. time and the project really didn't move forward. Um, the developer who owned it at the time um, gave it back to the state. Um, it had previously belonged to, to, to the state. and. In 2014, the town initiated um, getting it back um, so that we would have control over its sale and redevelopment. So we've been working closely with, uh, with the Commonwealth um, in, a, in a process whereby we get to keep half of the proceeds, at least, um, and we also get to determine who the buyer is, um, mm -hmm. what project we like and want to see there. So um, the RFP for the project went out um, last week, and we are expecting proposals uh, back. We're really hoping to get um, a good variety of, of different kinds of proposals from different developers. Mm -hmm. and well, we're really interested to see uh, what we get. The Economic Development Committee will um, have a main role in, in evaluating these proposals and figuring out uh, what's in the best interest of the town, and the selectmen ultimately make a decision. Sure. And I think uh, in, in the conversations that I've you know, witnessed publicly about, the, about that property, there really it seems to be a desire to see what, what the market and, and what ideas might be generated for this, uh, this, this property. And, I think a lot of credit goes to the Economic Development Committee for their uh, efforts to try to keep the options uh, as open as responsibly possible for this. Um, and we have, as you mentioned, we've enlisted the assistance of a professional uh, real estate broker, commercial real, real estate broker, to help us uh, evaluate the, those that come in. And he has set some very, uh, I think, uh, appropriate standards for uh, what proposals might come forth. And that'll, I think, be beneficial for all of us as we go to evaluate, particularly for the Economic Development Committee. Um, so it's certainly an exciting project with regard to that to that property. You know, it's a it's a large chunk of land, and we have an opportunity to uh, control the town's destiny with regard to what takes place in that large portion of land. One thing that I'll note that uh, you know you mentioned the role of the of the community planning commission, the selectmen, and the economic development committee. Um, we had um, 
quite a bit of assistance during the legislative process from Senator Bruce Tarr and Representative Brad Jones uh, to get this uh, moved forward through the state legislature. So without their assistance, I don't think that we would be here. But uh, probably uh, last and certainly not least would be yourself. I know you did a lot. So thank you for your, for your efforts to get this uh, moving forward and to keep it moving forward. You're welcome. Uh, it's, it's been an exciting project. I sure. think, um, you know, to have a big piece of land like this is unusual for a town. And um, I think people have wondered for a long time what could go here. And, and, and I just think it's really exciting. Yeah, now we'll find out. Yes. It'll be exciting. <laughs> So, uh, so that's certainly a, a long-range project, but not that long-range because we're, we're in the middle of it right now. Um, but there's other long-range planning that's been ongoing or will be taking place, and I know there's a, a few different projects that are out there. Maybe you could just uh, give us uh, an update on some of those um, uh, that, uh, that folks might have watched or seen some discussion on. Sure. Um, so pretty recently, I would say in the last few months, um, the Community Planning Commission requested um, that the Board of Selectmen adopt a complete streets policy for the town, and um, which they did. And we're really excited about this because um, this is a policy that asks the town to focus on all kinds of users of transportation. And what I mean by that is um, not just people driving alone in their cars, um, but people who have to get around in, in other ways, whether it's by walking or by bicycling. Um, in other towns, it would be public transit. Of course, we don't have that in North Reading. Um, but this policy is something that, um, well, it doesn't obligate the town to do any particular projects. It really gives us some extra tools and resources, including state funds, um, to, to, to fund some new projects where we have identified that they would be appropriate and helpful. For example, um, I think one of the biggest problems in North Reading um, with regard to transportation is that we don't have a lot of sidewalks. Um, new subdivisions have them um, because it's been in our requirements for a long time for subdivisions, but you know we have a lot of um, major thoroughfares that, that just don't have sidewalks. And we've heard from a lot of residents that people want to be able to walk more, um, walk more safely, um, have some more enjoyable places to walk. Um, you know, I think there's been a pr big move recently as far as th that this is for, you know, public health, um, that, you know, driving around everywhere isn't, isn't great for our health, um, and that, you know, this, is, this has become something that we're hearing that people want. So um, we have passed a policy that entitled us to um, be eligible for funds. Um, we received a $48,000 grant recently from uh, the Mass Department of Transportation um, in order to do what's called a prioritization plan where we are working with a consultant to um, list some important projects that we think the town really would like to see. And we, we coordinate that with what our DPW is already planning mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, new roadway construction. And this is really a way to look at how can we incorporate um, better infrastructure so that we are providing better for, for walking, biking, and, and you know, other modes of transportation. Mm. And what we're hopeful of, uh, at, at the end of this process, we will have a prioritization plan. Um, as long as it's approved by the state, we'll then be eligible to ask for um, up to $400,000 in construction funds, which is wonderful. It's something that, um, you know, in our capital improvement planning process is, has that those funds have been scarce in the past and they're just hard to come by. Um, it's, you know, there aren't a lot of grants that make that kind of funding available. And mm -hmm. so this is really intended to take some of the pressure off of that planning process and, and to identify new sources of funds for, for construction. So Excellent. that's very exciting. That's great, yes. Um, another uh, project that we've been working on, and actually it's just getting underway, um, we are going to be doing two transportation studies, um, so kind of related to this theme of transportation. Um, we are, so the Metropolitan Area Planning um, Commission, I'm sorry, Metropolitan Area Planning, Plan Planning Council um, is our regional planning agency, and um, we are part of a sub-region uh, for the northern suburbs of Boston. And we partner with about 10 other towns. Um, and we meet regularly and we talk about re you know, sub-regional planning initiatives. And one of these initiatives is uh, a suburban mobility study. We've received a $25,000 technical assistance grant from MAPC to look at um, transportation in the sub-region. Um, that would be, you know, our neighbors in um, Wilmington, Reading, Stoneham, um, and several of the other communities. Looking at where does the MBTA have service? Where could towns like North Reading that don't have that service better connect? Are there other options for getting people around? Are there creative ways to make use of the transportation network that does exist, both in terms of getting people to jobs and um, also just in terms of offering alternatives, um, you know, for environmental reasons, for health reasons, for and for any other reason. There certainly is a population of people who just can't 
can't drive and mm -hmm. we really have to be you know mindful of their needs um, so that study is just getting underway now and we're doing that in partnership with uh, the other subregion towns um, and in addition to that uh, North Reading on its own is also working with MAPC privately to not privately but um, just individually mm -hmm. um, to to do a study to try to figure out what what we can do um, in the absence of um, what's called paratransit um, transit options that are available to people in other communities for example the ride we don't have that in North Reading mm -hmm. um, and you know, it, it puts us at a disadvantage. We have a wonderful uh, Council on Aging that, that offers van service, but what they can offer is limited, and it, 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 um, there really is a strong need to help seniors and people with disabilities um, to get around a bit better. You know, a town that's set up the way we are is, is challenging. If you yeah. don't have a car, um, if you can't drive, if you're either too old or you don't see well or you just can't drive for any other reason, um, we really need to look at that. So um, we were fortunate enough to receive some funds um, at town meeting last spring, and we're really excited about looking at that, at, at, those, um, at those options. And let's see, we have a few other things, unless you had any particular uh, No, I mean, that. there's a lot going on, clearly. <laughs> there's and, a and lot it, going on. And it, it, relates to, it relates to the streets, you know, here in town. Mm -hmm. It relates to um, the, um, the issue of transportation on those streets. Uh, you know, I, I know that we're doing a lot to look at um, housing production um, in, in regard to, you know, wh where can we appropriately generate housing production in compliance with the state's requirements and expectations as well. And I know we're looking at um, the Main Street corridor and what we can be doing on Main Street. You know, is there anything that you'd like to share with folks with regard to those projects? Sure. So first I'll talk a little bit about housing. Mm -hmm. um, North Reading has never done one, but we recently received a, gra a grant to do um, a housing production plan, and that's basically a plan that it's got a very standard protocol. Lots of towns around us have done it. Um, lots of towns throughout Massachusetts have done it. Um, it's something that helps us to identify how to better meet the state's requirements under Chapter 40B, mm -hmm. which essentially is the law that requires all municipalities to provide 10% of their housing stock as um, affordable to a certain um, income level, and um, that those those affordable housing units have to be subsidized through certain eligible programs. Now, North Reading has about 9.5% of its housing stock counted right now on our affordable housing inventory. We're close to 10%. Um, some people are familiar with that 10% threshold. What it does is, for towns that are over 10%, um, they can they have a bit more control over new affordable housing projects that are coming in, whereas those um, that have not yet met that threshold if a housing project comes in that meets certain um, affordability requirements, um, they can override local zoning. Overriding local zoning can be really problematic um, for planners and for residents. Um, while we are you know, certainly in favor of um, promoting affordable housing where appropriate, sometimes the 40B projects that come in can um, be difficult as far as um, you know, not necessarily fitting with the town's overall plans. So in order to be proactive about housing and to make sure that we're offering a variety of housing um, types and levels of affordability in compliance with the state's regulations um, and trying to uh, find a path to getting back up to the 10% threshold that we're required to have, um, a, an affordable housing plan or housing production plan is something that will help us to identify that. So um, the state has given us a grant um, in the amount of $15,000. We'll be working with a consultant. And um, what we'll be doing is um, starting to identify one, what are our needs? Um, what do the people in North Reading need as far as um, what are we providing in, in terms of housing and what are we not providing? Mm -hmm. um, I think mo most of the housing that's been built in North Reading in recent years has been um, pretty large single family homes that aren't affordable to a lot of people. Um, we have provided some other, you know, apartments, you know, for example, the Edgewood ap apartments, but we, we do have to look at how we can um, provide different housing types. And then, and then part of this process is figuring out where could those go? Where are they appropriate in town? Where do, where do people want them? Mm -hmm. um, who might, who might um, benefit from them? Do we need to um, make special provisions for senior citizens who are now maybe aging out of the types of housing that they have? They maybe don't need a large expensive home anymore, but we don't offer a lot of options for, um, for people at that stage of life. Um, so these are all issues we'll be looking at through our housing production plan. Um, and then you also mentioned Main Street. Yes, um, we Ma have Main Street. There's a lot of interest yes. in town with regard to Main Street, and there's been a lot of discussion over the past couple of years. So um, first, I, I think it's important just to note that you know, with regard to the housing production plan, you know, something that we're doing, something that the state expects us to do as well, and something that we're doing with some uh, outside assistance as well. 
uh, to try to uh, you know, limit the, the burden on the taxpayer here in, in, in North Reading. Um, with regard to Main Street, there's a lot going on, a lot of questions with regard to it, so I think people are, are eager to hear about it. Sure. Um, so Main Street has been a priority of the CPCs for a really long time, longer than I've worked with the town. Um, they have a long history of, of looking at this corridor and trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, it's it's something that we hear feedback from residents pretty frequently. People don't really um, like and identify with it the way that they, they wish they could. Um, it's not particularly walkable. While it's got some great businesses and services that are offered, um, it's, it's, it's in somewhat of a, um, a difficult kind of a high-speed highway situation rather than feeling like a main street. A lot of people will say, you know, we don't have a real downtown, we have our town center, but that's, that's different. Um, as far as our main commercial corridor, it doesn't feel like a downtown and it certainly doesn't feel walkable or bikeable. Um, it's, things are a little bit hard to get to. You really have to have a car and, you know, even when you're in your car, you're kind of screeching into parking lots at pretty high speeds and then, um, you know, it's, it, it can be very awkward to use. Um, as, as far as um, people who own property along Main Street, we've heard feedback from them that they would do a lot more with their land. They would look at um, other options for different kinds of development if um, they, are, they had different options with regard to zoning and with regard to wastewater. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the big problems um, that I think a lot of people are aware of in town is that um, in, order to, in order to get a, a large uh, variety of choice for what you can actually develop on a main street. It really is important to have a, a, a place to put your wastewater and as a town that doesn't have municipal sewer, that has put Main Street at, at a real disadvantage. And for example, restaurants need really good capacity for wastewater treatments and those restaurants that exist have had to spend a lot of money to, to accommodate wastewater because the town can't give the municipal sewer. So sewerage is something that we're looking at long term, um, but in the meantime and in the short term, the CPC has been trying to figure out what can we do anyway. We have a couple of real obstacles and um, you know we did an economic development self-assessment uh, a few years ago uh, with Northeastern University and they identified for us you know your big problems with regard to attracting and retaining business in town is your infrastructure. I mean, that's really number one. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you don't have sewer is a problem, but that said, there are things you can do anyway. So we're trying to figure out what we can do anyway. And one of those things um, is zoning. Um, the zoning is um, in some ways not restrictive, but in other ways a little bit restrictive. Um, we have been thinking about ways to try to unlock obstacles to development. Um, for those people who own property along Main Street, um, one, one of the things that um, we, we did uh, another study with um, MAPC over the past year that was completed in the summer. Actually, it's available on our website, and I'll if I can show this. Um, this is the Town of North Reading Main Street um, Short-Term Economic Development Strategy. And this was intended to take a look at Main Street, um, what its assets are, what its obstacles to redevelopment are. And some, one of the recommendations that came out of this was you really need to look at your zoning. Um, we have some businesses in town. We could potentially have the capacity to um, to absorb more businesses. There could be more retail space that we could accommodate. Um, we're in a very competitive regional market situation. All the towns around us are attracting businesses. But of course, we have a wastewater problem and we have a zoning problem. Um, one of the things that they pointed out was that we don't have a lot of residents to support the businesses. And if we had a little bit more residential development um, at, a, at a slightly higher density and a little bit closer to the Main Street businesses, we would do better in terms of supporting those businesses and attracting mm -hmm. new ones too. So one of the initiatives that the CPC has taken on is figuring out how to best get a little bit more residential development if possible um, along Main Street. And that is reflected in one of those zoning articles that's going to be on the warrant at town meeting. Um, and in addition to that, uh, we're also looking at how to help property owners with their wastewater problem. I think over the long term, the CPC would love to see a sewer line down Main Street, and I think that we all hope that that will happen one day. Um, in the short term, because we know that that's very expensive and there are permitting obstacles that we have to get beyond and will probably take a lot of time, in the meantime, we want to look at some alternatives that have been tried in other towns. Um, you know, Westford is one example of a town that also doesn't have, um, you know, much municipal sewer service, and they have a lot of large commercial developments because private property owners got together and um, figured out how to share package treatment plants. Mm -hmm. And um, you see pretty significant commercial development in that town, and um, that's something that we're looking at. We want to do a feasibility study to look at. Um, 
starting with a concentrated section of Main Street, really the area where Route 62 crosses Main Street um, between uh, Winter Street um, and uh, Nichols, kind of, it's, it's about a three quarter of a mile stretch. We're looking at that area and we're trying to figure out what would it take um, to get a privately invested, um, a, a private investment into a, a wastewater package treatment mm -hmm. facility. Um, having a facility like that would really enable property owners um, in that area to do more with their land. It would make it easier to develop things like restaurants, potentially housing, um, you know, depending on what happens with zoning uh, at town meeting and at the next town meeting potentially. Um, and so what we'd like to do is we'd like to figure out, is this feasible? How much might it cost? What properties could potentially participate in this? What might some permitting obstacles be? And in the end, if we did achieve this and some zoning changes, um, could we actually get together um, you know, a concept plan that would show some really interesting development? And if we could get together a really interesting and attractive development that, that piqued the interest of some property owners, we really would like to use that as a tool to say, look what could happen here. We could have somewhat of a downtown feel in this concentrated area. We could really develop what, what feels like a downtown area, which we're really currently lacking on this commercial corridor that has felt more like a highway traditionally. So that's a goal um, that we're, we're hoping to achieve. Um, we do have a funding article mm -hmm. on the warrant for October um, that's, that's connected to this. Excellent. So clearly a lot going on uh, in the world of the Community Planning Commission and related to uh, development and planning here in town. Um, thank you for spending some time with us uh, today. Um, Danielle has mentioned that there are some articles on the town meeting warrant for the October 17th town meeting that relate to zoning uh, and the uh, study for wastewater treatment options in the uh, area of uh, Route 28 and Route 62. In addition to those warrant articles, there are warrant articles related to the potential construction of restroom facilities at the Arthur Kenny Field. There's a warrant article uh, relative to uh, civil service in the North Reading Police Department. And there's also a warrant article relative to the uh, fiscal year 2017 operating budget and some transfers within the budget. There are a number of other routine articles as well. And residents should expect to get the warrant in the mail in the next few days uh, prior to town meeting. Um, there's a lot going on in town, clearly over in, in the planning area and also in other areas. And we continue to encourage folks to, uh, to stay involved, uh, follow along on the website or in the newspaper. Um, there's public hearings for many of the developments that have been discussed. There have been workshops for some of the economic development related activities. There'll be town meeting coming up on October 17th. The, the most important thing we can stress is to, to, to stay involved, uh, to take the opportunity to participate in the discussion because uh, your input matters. Uh, the elected and appointed officials involved in planning are listening and, uh, and take, uh, take all the, the, the factors that are brought, brought to light from our residents uh, into consideration. So uh, we encourage you to stay involved. Again, Danielle, Danielle, thank you very much for your time today. You're welcome. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you at town meeting on October 17th.